Good morning and welcome to worship with All Saints Lutheran Church in Fitchburg, Wisconsin on this Christ the King Sunday. As COVID-19 numbers continue to be high, bringing about a new mandate that prohibits any indoor gatherings, we're once again shifting our plans a bit when it comes to worship. We were planning to live stream from the sanctuary uh, each Sunday morning, but we are going to move back to pre-recording worship so that uh, we can be as safe as possible. Which means that starting next Sunday, worship will be available both on Facebook and YouTube right away at 9 o'clock. Um, so if you would like, we can all gather together at that time for worship. That also means that we have a few opportunities for you to be involved in worship uh, in different ways. Some of the same ways we've been doing and some different ways as well. First of all, we still would like to have readers who read the first lesson for worship. That will need to be done recording at home, uh, but we are happy to help you do that. I'm happy to talk you through that if you are not familiar with that and we can figure out a way for that to happen if that is not in your comfort zone. Uh, we also, as we head into Advent next week, would like to invite those of you who have a practice of lighting an Advent wreath in your home to help us lead that moment as a part of our worship. And so to record the litany that will be a part of our Advent wreath lighting with your Advent wreath at home. So if you are interested in helping with that, please let me know. Uh, we obviously need four families to do that for the four Sundays in Advent uh, beginning next Sunday. So uh, we hope that we'll have some folks who will invite us into their homes uh, to help us with that uh, meaningful piece of beginning Advent. As you may know, this newest order preventing any indoor gatherings was put into place on the day that John was set to record with all of our musicians the music that they had been working on over the past couple of months. So that means those recordings were not able to happen. Um, we're grateful for all of the work that all of our musicians are putting into making this happen for John and for so many of you who have been a part of that. Uh, but as we have had to do several times over the course of the last eight months, we are needing to pivot once again. Uh, and so we are wondering if there are some of you out there who would be willing to record some music from your homes that we could use as a part of our Advent and Christmas services. If you are interested in doing that, please be in touch with John. Also want to invite you, um, as we head into the season of Advent, we have these Advent devotion packets uh, that we have put together that you can either stop by the church and pick one of these up. Um, I will be here at church on Wednesday, uh, not necessarily for any indoor visits, but at least for you to be able to come and pick up one of these kits. Uh, if you stop at church and pick one up, it has everything printed out for you, along with all of the crafty supplies you might need to do different pieces of that if you choose to do all aspects of this. Um, you also, however, can email Heather and ask her to send you this document by email. Uh, if you have craft supplies at home or aren't interested in the crafts, uh, that you can just get the document via email and uh, put, bring everything together on your own. But if you would like to stop by and pick up, uh, you still can do that on Wednesday. I will be here starting at 11 uh, and we'll see exactly how late I'm gonna be here. I'm usually here till six. I'm not sure I'll be here quite that late this Wednesday, uh, but you are welcome to stop by. Uh, feel free to contact me and let me know that you're coming if you're worried that I might not be here. So um, hope that you will will use these um, as a way to shape the Advent season in your homes. We also will not be able to gather in person this Wednesday for worship or for pie, uh, as we normally would do on Thanksgiving Eve. 
But there will be a short uh, devotion, uh, worship kind of, available online on on Wednesday afternoon. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Hopefully that will help shape your celebrations, uh, no matter how small they may be, uh, to help center our focus on giving thanks to God for all that God has given us. I invite you now to invite your, I, I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we begin with our gathering hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus Name. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning at the 15th verse. Paul writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. 
I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel comes from the 25th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 31st verse. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment. But the righteous, into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the festival of Christ the King. While the language of Christ as King is language we may use a lot in church, the concept of what it means to be or to have a king maybe one that is a little less familiar to us. 
Often our descriptions of kings are either of figureheads with no real power or of someone who had great power but abused it, using it to take advantage of those he ruled over, often violently and for his own gain. Neither of those descriptions fit a king that I would want to serve, and neither of them fit the Jesus that we encounter through scripture either. So what does it mean for us that Jesus is king? And what does it mean for us to celebrate Christ as king? Given that our visions and descriptions of a king might be a little skewed in our 21st century minds, I took a quick peek at the dictionary, which defined king as the chief authority and a person considered as the best or more, most important of its kind. I think we could all agree that those descriptions do fit Jesus well and the role that we hope Jesus has in all of our lives. Our reading from Matthew begins in a very regal way as we hear about the Son of Man coming in glory, sitting on the throne of his glory and gathering all people together to separate the good from the bad. The king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That judgment, that final judgment, is one that can only come from a king, from the king. In our reading from Ephesians, we hear about Christ being raised to the throne. We hear meaningful words about the greatness of God's power and the fact that God put that power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. It's true. Being king does come with power, as is described here in detail. But it's a very different kind of power than we normally imagine. God's power is not in name only. Nor does God use that power to abuse those in his kingdom. The power of God is the power of love. The power of love. Now, if you are, like me, a child who did most of their growing up in the 80s, or are simply a fan of the music of that era, maybe you are hearing the same chorus in your head that I did as I thought about Christ's power of love. And while I frequently quote theologians in my sermons, it can't hurt to occasionally quote the great Huey Lewis, right? Now, you may think that I've completely lost my mind, but listen to a few of the phrases pulled from that popular song, thinking about what this says about the power of God's love. The power of love is a curious thing. Makes one man weep, make another man sing. Change a hawk to a little white dove, more than a feeling, that's the power of love. You don't need money, don't take fame, don't need no credit card to ride this train. It's strong and it's sudden and it's cruel sometimes, but it might just save your life. That's the power of love. Tougher than diamonds and stronger than steel, but you won't feel nothing until you feel the power of love. You'll know what to do when it gets hold of you, and with a little help from above, 
feel the power of love. This is the power of God. Christ rules his kingdom with the power of love. Love that changes us. Love that saves us. A strong love that sometimes makes us weep and other times makes us sing. A great power that moves us to share what we have first received. The powerful love of God. We see this in the story of the sheep and the goats. People sharing that powerful love. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Simple acts of powerful love. As one author writes, on this final Sunday of the liturgical year, we receive a parable from Jesus challenging and inspiring our imaginations to grasp our whole vocation that is celebrated in baptism, to embody Christ in every moment and to engage every part of our world as Christ's redeemed creation. Our life's work, our call to baptism, is to embody Christ, to allow others to see Christ through our words and actions, and also to see Christ in those we serve. Now this list in Matthew is not simply a checklist to mark off. Someone hungry or thirsty? Okay, check. I drop things off at the St. Mark's food pantry. A stranger? Check. Everyone looks a little bit different with masks on these days, and maybe everybody seems a little bit like a stranger. But I continue to smile, even though people can't see it, and greet people as I encounter them. Someone is without clothes? Check. This quarantine has allowed me plenty of time to clean out my closet and donate clothes to Goodwill or other places. Someone sick? Check. I took dinner to my friend who's in COVID quarantine. In prison? That one was a little tougher, but check. Uh, maybe back when All Saints was able to send cards to inmates. I was a part of that. That all counts, right? God's powerful love is bigger than a checklist of a few people in need. We have received this power. And as we know, with great power comes great responsibility. We're called to share this powerful love with everyone, including and most importantly, the least of these. Those who are often most easily ignored. Almost everyone we meet has a need of some kind. Even if it is as simple as a smile to brighten an otherwise gloomy day. How can we embody Christ to all we meet? And to share with them not just some food and clothes, but to share our love. To share God's love. Yes, we are called to be Christ to others. But we are also called to see Christ in others. That's what it's all about. It's the power of love. And thank God for that love. For it is only the power of love. The power of God's great love. That allows us to see Christ in all people. From the least to the greatest. And it's definitely only the power of God's love that allows us to show Christ's love to the world. As we experience God's love, God's power through the love of Jesus, and we share that love with others, we do serve Christ the King, and we help to bring God's kingdom to earth.
It is time for the children's message, and so I invite any children of God, no matter how old you are, to uh, pay a little extra attention. I brought a few things with me today, and I want you to help me figure out what they have in common. So, I have this scarf, lovely scarf, keeps someone very warm, and lovely Wisconsin red, go Badgers. I have this apple, honey crisp apples are coming kind of as big as your head these days, but I have this apple, and I have this welcome sign. Um, this is something that my mom made once upon a time that I still have in my house, and so a welcome sign. And then the other thing I have with me pretty much everywhere I go, which is my glasses. So a scarf, a welcome sign, an apple, and my glasses. What do you think those things all have in common? What would you say if I told you that all of these things help us see? What do you think an apple, a welcome sign, or I mean my glasses, that's pretty obvious, right? But how do these other things help us see? What if I changed that question just a little bit and said, how do these things help us see Jesus? Does that change your answer a little bit? In our gospel for today, Jesus talks about people who have given food to those who are hungry, who have shown welcome to strangers or reached out to those who were sick or in prison, and people who gave clothes or something warm to people who didn't have them. And by doing that, Jesus says that those people who gave those gifts to those in need were actually doing that for Jesus. And so today, we, when we think about that, and that we think about all of the ways that we can help Jesus, sorry if you haven't been able to hear me, just realized I forgot to flip the microphone back around, um, but all these ways that we help Jesus are ways that we, well, ways that we help others are ways that we help Jesus. But it's also not just helping those people, but it's recognizing that Jesus, we see Jesus in those people who are in need. That Jesus lives in each one of us. And so as we help we might feel really great about that fact that we are being Jesus for those people, that we are reaching out with what they need. But it's also important to see those people as beloved children of God and to see Jesus in each of them. And we learn a little bit more about who Jesus is when we take the time to recognize that Jesus is dwelling in each person that we meet. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you for all that you have given us and for the ways that you feed us, the ways that you welcome us, the ways that you reach out to us in healing and that you visit us when we need you. Help us to do those things for others, but even more so help us to see you in each person that we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. And I invite you all to join me as we join together in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, on the world, and on all in need. Responding to each petition with, your mercy is great. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Comfort and heal all who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Especially Steve, Jack. Kathleen, the Hoppy family, Richard, Bob, and those we name before you now, aloud or silently. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Listen as we call on you, O oh God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Each time we gather for worship, one of the ways that we join together in worship is to give back to God out of the abundance that God has given us. You can do that in a couple of different ways while we are worshiping online. You can send your check through the mail. Our mail is checked every day, picked up and brought into the building. You also can do that by following the giving tab on our website, www.allsaints-madison.org. We thank you for your continu continued stewardship in these times. And now, may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. And all God's people say, Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.